China Xi gives his stance on Ukraine and Russia. His comments follow France and Germany's urging China to push for peace talks between the warring countries. And amid sweeping sanctions, Germany says it can't stop buying energy from Russia. Appeals for peace are seemingly unwelcome in China, even when they come from major international organizations. While two world-level soccer events appear censored in China over similar reasons. The U.S. arrests a military contractor for allegedly sending technology to China. His company is known for supplying weapons-grade parts. A hit to Beijing's zero-case policy. More than two-thirds of China's provinces and municipalities have reported COVID-19 cases this month. And for those watching our full episode, major U.S. credit card companies are exiting Russia. How will their departure impact Russia's economy? The United Nations human rights chief is headed to China in May with a stop in Xinjiang. It's set to mark the first visit from a top UN rights official in years. The court rules the UK must pay billions of dollars in penalties to the European Union. The case ties back to fraud imports from China. Welcome to China In Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. The West is pushing Beijing to take action on the Ukraine war. Leaders from Germany and France held a video summit with Xi Jinping on Tuesday. In it, they said they are willing to work with China to push ahead peace talks between Ukraine and Russia. The talks come as two million Ukrainians have fled their homes. And Ukraine's death toll hits over 2,000. And here's Xi's response. He said China is willing to play a positive role with the international community based on the needs of the parties concerned. China's foreign minister made a similar comment Monday. Minister Wang Yi said China is willing to play a constructive role in urging peace talks, though neither officials gave details. The Chinese Communist Party hasn't taken a clear stance on the war so far. It's not slapping sanctions on Russia. But two China-based banks suspended doing business with Moscow amid Western sanctions, potentially out of fear of being hit by the sanctions themselves. In the meantime, Chinese authorities have been scrubbing online comments that sympathize with Ukraine, but pro-Russia comments are left untouched. Despite the ongoing Ukraine invasion, sweeping Western sanctions and corporate boycotts, Europe's largest economy says it cannot stop buying Russian energy. Germany's new leader recently replaced former Chancellor Angela Merkel. He says Germany is too dependent on Russian fuel for power, heating and industrial production. While in the U.S., lawmakers just struck a bipartisan deal to ban importing Russian energy. The idea is to punish Russia for its attack on Ukraine and ensure the U.S. is not financing its war. The U.S. only gets a fraction of its energy from Russia, but Europe gets far more. 40 percent of its natural gas came from Russia last year. So what can Europe do? It wants to diversify its energy sources and support Ukraine. The European Union laid out a new plan this week looking to reduce its dependency on Russia. By the end of this year, we can replace 100 BCM of gas imports from Russia. That is two-thirds of what we import from them. Ukraine seems to want the same thing. Its foreign minister said Monday, stop buying Russian gas and oil because right now Russian oil smells of Ukrainian blood. But finding new energy sources takes time and money. And right now, energy prices are already going through the roof in Europe. The Chinese regime is censoring a speech calling for peace by the International Paralympic Committee, or IPC. At the Winter Paralympics opening ceremony on Friday, IPC President Andrew Parsons strongly condemned the war between Russia and Ukraine. Speaking in Beijing, he said the Olympic truce for peace must be respected and that the 21st century is a time for dialogue and diplomacy, not war and hate. He also added that he was horrified with what is taking place in the world. But while the speech was on air, Chinese state-run broadcaster CCTV lowered the volume. The station also stopped live Chinese translation during the part of Parsons' speech that condemned the war. An IPC spokesman says the organization has asked CCTV for an explanation. 
But the issue isn't just with this speech. CCTV also pulled the UK's Premier League and Germany's Bundesliga soccer games off the air over the weekend. Both soccer leagues showed solidarity with Ukraine. The Chinese regime seems to be working hard to keep the anti-war message out of China. After Russia invaded Ukraine, the IPC banned Russian athletes from the games. But none of China's state media outlets reported on the ban. The news also appear to be censored on Chinese social media. Federal agencies have arrested a California-based military contractor for allegedly sending technology to China. The Justice Department said he broke federal export laws by sending out sensitive U.S. tech to multiple foreign countries. Federal agencies arrested 77-year-old Joe Seri, former owner and CEO of Tungsten Heavy Powder and Parts. They allege he knowingly and willfully exported military intelligence. The intelligence includes data and drawings to China and India without U.S. approval. The San Diego-based company supplies fragments and weapon-grade components made of tungsten, a rare metal to the military. He conspired with his 70-year-old brother, Dror Seri, a dual citizen of Israel and South Africa. He remains a fugitive and is believed to be living in Israel. A U.S. attorney stated, the indictment alleges that these brothers disregarded important regulations designed to keep sensitive information from falling into the hands of those who would harm America. The brothers allegedly created a non-company email to secretly access the sensitive documents from Tungsten's part system. They exported the sensitive technical drawings by email when Dror was in India and China. Prosecutors said Tungsten Parts had contracts with multiple aerospace and defense companies from 2016 to 2019 to work on projects involving the construction of an advanced rapid response weapon. It's illegal to transfer data, goods, and services that are designed as defense items out of the United States without a license. If convicted, violators face a maximum penalty of up to 20 years in prison and a $1 million fine. Tungsten Parts has agreed to assist with the investigation. NTD reached out to Tungsten Parts for a comment. The Chinese Communist Party, or CCP virus, is making the rounds across China. According to official data, 24 provinces or municipalities in the country have reported confirmed cases this month. Beijing has held firm to its so-called zero-case policy. It seeks to completely eradicate all CCP virus cases through mass testing its residents to quickly detect new infections and stringent lockdown measures to halt the spread. The policy differs from most other nations, which have largely adopted to living with the virus in low numbers. On Monday, China reported just over 300 cases, though NTD cannot independently verify that figure due to the Chinese regime's tight control over what information is released and its history of underreporting virus cases. That number may be much higher in reality. In southern China's Shenzhen city, residents must get tested for the CCP virus daily. Anyone who refuses is barred from going to work the next day. On top of that, refusing a test prompts an automatic yellow health code reading. The digital codes are stored on smartphones and are part of China's contact tracing program. A yellow reading indicates that a person may be at risk of infection and means its holder will be blocked from riding public transportation, entering grocery stores or visiting other public spaces. Shenzhen City is one of Hong Kong's closest neighbors. And right now, Hong Kong is facing an unprecedented pandemic surge. Tens of thousands of people are testing positive daily, while the daily death toll sits in the hundreds. Other regions in China are coping with similar issues. Some parts of Shanghai are now under lockdown. Students from one elementary school, plus their parents, were gathered up and taken to a quarantine center after just one parent tested positive for the infection. A resident living close to the school told us more about the situation. They explained that locals don't dare to leave their homes now because if anyone shows symptoms of illness, even just the common cold, they'll be taken to quarantine. Opposition to China's brutal rule over Tibet has never stopped. This reached an even higher level after a popular Tibetan singer set himself on fire in protest. In a small town in northern India, exiled Tibetans held a candlelight vigil for the young lost life. 
More than 157 Tibetans have self-immolated calling for freedom, calling for return of His Holiness the 14th Dalai Lama. So we are here to protest against CCP and demand justice and also hold China accountable for all the atrocities against not just Tibetans but Uyghurs, Southern Mongolians, Taiwanese and Hong Kongers, those who are currently under illegal occupation of Chinese Communist regime. Protesting Tibetans marched through the central part of the town, carrying placards and banners. They shouted slogans against the Chinese Communist Party and its repressive policies. China has ruled Tibet with an iron fist since its so-called peaceful liberation in 1950. But the party has denied any repression in the region and brags that its rule brought development to what it called a backward and impoverished region. Since 2009, more than 150 Tibetans have reportedly set themselves on fire as a form of protest. And that's all for today's China in Focus on YouTube. We are now sharing a shortened version of our program on YouTube. That's after being demonetized for a year. Full episodes can be watched on our partner platform, Epoch TV. To sign up for a 14-day free trial, please click the link down below. Thanks for watching China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer, and see you tomorrow.